Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about something that's been on my mind for a while now. After what we saw go down in Battle at Big Rock and Fallen Kingdom, one of the things that I've been interested in seeing the most in the next installment is the effect that these wild dinosaurs will have on our modern ecosystem. What I'm genuinely intrigued to see is just how these animals will change our world and possibly even disrupt the balance of things that we take for granted in our everyday lives. Things like livestock populations, herds of wild mammals that are local to the Northern California area, or even the plant life that grows all around the dinosaurs' new habitats. What's going to become of these things now that these prehistoric creatures are moving into their new homes? And how does all of that affect us as human beings? Now, as far as we know, in Battle at Big Rock, it's been approximately one year since Maisie pushed the button and released the animals into the wilds of the West Coast. Encounters with humans are rare, but they do indeed seem to be happening. I personally think this would suggest that the dinosaurs are kind of slowly moving their way towards more populated or even suburban sort of territories. In the short film, we see a stegosaurus causing a car crash, a pair of Sauralophus drinking near a small boat, and even a hungry Pteranodon interrupting a dove release at a wedding. I'm pretty sure this means that the breakout is getting kind of difficult for people to truly contain. But what does that mean for the Californian wildlife? And can we expect it to take a hit before the release of the next film? Well, the best thing to do in a situation like this is to look to the real world for a good point of reference. And while living dinosaurs have of course not been released into any open areas in our reality, there have been quite a few cases of nasty invasive species destroying much of their new lands once they rest into them. This is mainly due to the predator and prey balance getting thrown off once a new creature is introduced into a foreign ecosystem. In fact, the National Wildlife Foundation has even gone on record to say that approximately 42% of threat or endangered species are at risk due to these invasive species. That basically means that almost half of our critically rare animals are in danger of dying off because of unwanted guests coming into their homes and ruining the habitats for them. And just imagine what that percentage would be like if it was dinosaurs wandering into places that they shouldn't. Since the first outbreak at the Lockwood Estate is basically what's kicking off the new Jurassic World, looking into the wildlife of California should be a pretty good way to gauge how the dinosaurs would impact that area. And from the looks of it, I don't think the dinosaurs are going to have much competition. California is home to many different species of mammal that don't really grow to anywhere near the size of most of Injun's animals. Possums, rabbits, shrews, and bats will probably have a lot to worry about in the single year between Fallen Kingdom and Big Rock. But even larger species like the gray wolf, mule deer, and even the black bear probably won't fare too well either. One of the most destructive elements that can tear an ecosystem apart is the introduction of a new predator that can outcompete local animals for food sources. Imagine a bear on the hunt for something to eat on any given day. Maybe fish, a small rodent of some kind, or possibly even a little deer. Well, with something like a baryonyx now existing freely in its native environment, it will not only have to compete with a much more adapted predator for these resources, it will also have to evade being hunted by this new invader as well. Now, of course, all of the speculation rests on the assumption that the dinosaurs will still be within this area for quite some time following their escape. So far, they've stayed near this location for around a year, so I think it's safe to assume that they're deep in the thick of it after that long period of time. I'm not so sure what's going to happen to some of the more brazen and loud species that got away, since I personally think that a Tyrannosaur or a Patasaurus would be coveted prizes that local zoos, hunters, and wildlife foundations would love to get their hands on. But as for other creatures that may be a bit more timid than the biggest of their kin, it's really up in the air as to what happens to them. The Dinosaur Protection Group was already protesting for the animal's safety at the beginning of Fallen Kingdom, and the United States government itself even entertained the idea of relocating the animals before Ian Malcolm changed their minds. So as far as Northern California is concerned, I think I'm personally going to look at it like it's a much more extreme version of what's been going on in the Florida Everglades for the past several years. But hey, those are all just my own opinions. What do you guys personally think about this stuff? And keep in mind that this is only one small part of the world where dinosaurs are known to have broken out. Remember, half of the Lockwood auction already took place before these guys escaped, which means that there are dinosaurs in far more places than just Northern California. Now, whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them.
in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. It really means the world to me that all of you guys enjoy what I do so much, and I'm extremely thankful to have all of your incredible support. Now I'd like to thank all of you for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. See you all in the next one, guys, and as always, take it easy.